Well, good morning. Top of the morning to you, matter of fact. So, you've got your dim bulb tester all built, and you're ready to use it. But you'd like to know how to use it. That's a good question. There are a couple, what I call, different modes of using the dim bulb tester. One mode is... Well, before we get any further, let's show you what we've got here. I've got the dim bulb tester. This is a little, uh, what they call a dynamic demonstrator, or uh, kind of a little learning lab. All it really is is a, is a power transformer, and then it's got a couple basic components. Uh, there's a uh, rectifier tube that gets plugged into it. There's a, uh, which is just a, uh, basically a tube version of two diodes. There's a high voltage transformer which has a primary and a secondary is consisting of 300, 325 uh, volts center tapped and two filament transformers. There's a couple resistors. This is supposed to be the load resistor and a couple caps and a choke. And so this is sort of would simulate the power supply on a tube radio if you're working on the tube radio and wanted to use your dim bulb tester. So just to show you what's going on here, I've set up the voltmeter. And we'll focus a little more on the voltmeter and the dim bulb tester. Um, this base in the dim bulb tester is actually called an Edison base and you can use these old glass fuses in the dim bulb tester just to make it an inline fuse. This one happens to be 10 amps and you can see here that as soon as I pan up this isn't working out terribly well at all. How about we back up a little bit? There we go. You can see that I've uh, this is voltage on the demonstrator. There's a circuit on there that uh, lets you see what's going on. And we've got 120 volts, 21 volts to be very persnickety. Actually, 121.8 volts at this moment in time to be really persnickety. <laughs> of course, it changes. So right now we've got the demonstrator uh, powered up, and we've got just a fuse in there. So we'll go ahead and take the fuse out. This is an old glass fuse. This is an Edison-based fuse. You can still get these. Uh, originally, I had made another video that had demonstrated this, but I wasn't very happy with it. And in that original video, I said you could get these down to about 7 amps. That isn't true. You can get these down to half an amp. I don't know where you'd buy one, but they do make them. So, in the dim bulb tester mode, there's a couple different ways to use this. One way is a current limiting way where you pretty much just pour the coals to whatever you're working with and you're waiting for disaster to befall you. And so right here I've stuck a 100 watt bulb in and you can see that the voltage is 121.8 volts. What I'm going to do is, over here, I'm going to short one of the windings with one of the little test leads that was provided and turn this on. So let's say your radio or piece of equipment, guitar amp, whatever you're playing with, is running away nicely and the device shorts, the light will light and the voltage will drop down. So there you go. So it dropped down by about half on the test leads there. So you can see where that would kind of indicate that A, there's something going on there that light would, if you were running normally and the short occurred, that light will light up. And it kind of protects your device from getting barbecued. There's a real good example there. Um, there I shorted across, the, their bulb is brighter and the voltage is lower across the dim bulb tester 22 volts because I shorted across the uh, secondary, high voltage secondary. And I assume that it would get even brighter if I short across another output here. Probably isn't doing this transformer any good, but 
yeah, it dropped down a little bit more. But you can see there that it sort of protects the out, but it's sort of a, mm, for lack of a better word, it's sort of a current limiting mode or that type of thing. Uh, basically what happens is the, the, it perceives that short and then the bulb takes all the brunt. When you're the other way around, uh, where the device is normally running, the bulb just kind of passes the voltage on and the device runs. Now this only works correctly if the bulb is sized correctly and this only works with incandescent bulbs. So compact fluorescence and LED bulbs not so much. Uh, you can use those uh, elsewhere in the house to save energy. Okie dokie. One of the other ways you can use the dim bulb tester is to bring up a device, uh, kind of the poor man's Variac. Uh, Variac is a variable transformer. And you, it goes from typically zero volts, the output is zero volts, up to 130 volts. And the thinking behind that is you kind of slowly ramp up a device and uh, it won't just suddenly throw that voltage onto it there and, and kind of shock the components. And it can, gives you a chance to kind of watch what's going on. And you can stop and look and see what current's being consumed. Well, if you don't have such a device, you can use the dim bulb tester to do the same thing. What you do is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick the, the uh, rectifier tube in the demo unit here. What you do is you start out with a very small bulb. There are a lot of different sized bulbs. It's always interesting to me uh, when, when something has a light bulb in it, it burns out, you usually pop in your pocket and head off to the home center hardware store or wherever you're at to see if there's a, a, a replacement. When you're looking for bulbs to use in the dim bulb tester you start looking at all the different wattages and there seems to be a miramar of different wattages and kind of like styles of bulbs. This is a pretty small bulb. This is about the smallest Edison based bulb I could find at the time. This is 7 watt and I believe this is a little appliance bulb. And I'm going to go ahead and screw it in here. And you can see that it's kind of lighting. And you can see that the voltage across the demo, the power supply demonstrator here is about 27 volts. The reason for that is, is I've got a load on it now and I can take that off of there. And you can see that it drops it down. And there it is with everything disconnected. So I'll go ahead and connect the uh, connect the regular, excuse me, the uh, rectifier tube back up. So what's happening there is the, the, the dim bulb tester is limiting the amount of voltage and current to the demo unit. So you're only getting about 28 volts there. If you're trying to bring up something new you don't know about and want to just kind of warm it up and be gentle with it, that would be the same as uh, turning your Variac on and kind of juicing it up to about 28 volts. But that really isn't enough to make anything run. So you want the next size bulb up. I believe as a rule, I'm not 100% sure, I just use these, you know, you just kind of develop a feel for these over the years. I believe you need a, to make a device run correctly, let's say a little radio, let's say it's 50 watt, I believe you need a bulb that's twice the wattage or about 100 watt. So if you had a 100 watt radio, you need a couple hundred watts for the bulbs. And uh, when you get past a 100 watt light bulb, you're gonna have to start searching for stuff like heat lamps, you might have to start paralleling up bulbs you might find some of those little heat element coils and stuff. Those kind of things would work just fine. So here's a 11 watt bulb. I believe this is a what they call a marquee bulb. I'm not sure what it was uh, originally intended for. I assume marquees. There you can see it's not lit very bit, but the voltage has come up quite a bit. There it's 34 volts. 
So we're getting there. Oh, the next bulb I've got is um, that is tw I think that's 25 watt. That's I believe a candelabra bulb. And you see, we're getting up there pretty good. There's about 70 volts. If you're using this on a radio, the radio actually might start coming on, depending on the wattage. One of the things I do, too, is when I use, get these bulbs, I get these specifically to use, so you kind of kind of keep them away from uh, people on the prowl for bulbs. I usually write on there what they are, or on the base. Uh, this is a 40 watt bulb, another kind of a candelabra bulb. You can see every every time we stepped up, the bulb gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. You turn the transformer on here, you can see it come up a little bit more. But there's about 95 volts on there. That probably would make most devices run. This is a 60 watt bulb. We're starting to get up there pretty good. This may not even light. Uh, yeah, see there's 113 volts. That would probably make an old tube radio run. And well, I can't see it, but it's probably not lit. But you can see it's still limiting the voltage a little bit. Here's a 100 watt bulb, and it's got 119 volts, so it's still dropping the voltage a tiny bit, but not much. There's 117 volts would be just perfect for an older, uh, probably like an older 5 tube radio, something made in the you know the 40s or 50s. And again, if something goes bad or happens to screw up, that bulb of light lets you know it's something bad's going on. So there's a couple different modes. One of the things to be aware of is that there is some current being drawn across that bulb and don't be surprised if you have it on your bench and you brush, if you've run something for some time and you brush up against it, even though the bulb isn't lit, there may be a little bit of heat in there so you, it'll get warm so don't be shocked if you brush up against it and the thing is hot. So there you go. There's a couple different ways to run the dim bulb tester. Like I said, in this mode, you're waiting for a short to happen. It's kind of a limiter, current regulator, whatever you want to call it. How much does that actually drop that down? Yeah, about half. That's okay. Which should be a pretty good deal if you're working with a device. Keep in mind if you use this on like power amps and stuff as you start increasing the uh, output to the power amp, it'll start drawing more current, that bulb may start to flicker, which is kind of fun. Like I said before, one of the other things you can do is screw a fuse into that. Uh, I use the dim bulb tester a lot of different ways. I screw those fuses in there on uh, on things I'm working on in the in the shop. There you're back to 120. And uh, a lot of the a lot of my shop circuits are pretty heavy circuits and if I'm not using the Variac and isolation transformer and it's something small I'm a little concerned about I'll use the dim bulb tester with a fuse in it that's rated pretty low that way if uh, if the device screws up even though if after I went to all the trouble to test it and be careful with it it'll just pop the fuse my mains down there to the bench are pretty heavy duty, so uh, if something shorts and it's hooked to one of those mains, it's probably going to fry right there on the bench and not uh, and not blow the circuit breaker down there. You can get these fuses too in little circuit breaker forms. There's a little button on there, but I don't believe they go down much past 10 amps. The home centers sell them still. There's still a lot of uh, service panels that still have old glass fuses in them, even though the world probably doesn't care for them. There are thousands of houses still lurking out there. I see these things all the time. And actually, you can get these fuses, quite a few of them, at garage sales and stuff. They're floating around all over the place. 
So hopefully that helps you out. Um, that's kind of some of the uses of the dim bulb tester. Um, it's a, uh, I don't know, originally I called it a poor man's tool. It's uh, not a poor man's tool. It's a limited funds uh, person's tool. How's that sound? <laughs> it doesn't sound as good. That's okay. Uh, so don't don't after you get uh, more well off or uh, don't forget to uh, hang on to the hang on to your dim bulb tester. There are a lot of different ways to build these. I've seen them pretty minimalistic, where it's literally kind of a line cord and a bulb. But uh, I've built a number of these for friends over the years, and uh, they use them quite a bit so I don't know there you go so that'll get you going so we've got how to build the dim bulb tester how to use the dim bulb tester now you gotta get out there and find some goodies to use it on so that'll keep you out of trouble anyway take it easy and uh, if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them if you have uh, time and you'd like to subscribe to my channel that's uh, I always appreciate that and what that does for you that doesn't just uh, uh, give me something that gives you something what happens is uh, when I make a new video uh, you get a little kind of a heads up in your uh, I believe in your Google Plus account or in your uh, YouTube account since they're kinda homogeneously one magically now uh, it'll be one or the other. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I always see it on my uh, YouTube subscriptions board. I have other videos. Feel free to peruse the older ones. Uh, you can go to my channel and kind of work on them or look at them. Uh, I have other other kinds of videos too. I have mechanical and electromechanical and electronic and electrical and uh, tips and tricks of the trades. Some of my things are day to day. So uh, you never know what you might find. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. Take it easy.